What's going on guys? Adam again back with Atomic Garage and today we're working on Sylvia again. We're going to try and actually do all of the suspension for this truck coming up in this video. See you then. Yes, guys, as the intro just stated, we're going to be working on installing new shocks all the way around on this truck and also rear lift blocks as well, as well as cranking up the front torsion bars. And this is much needed. Also, inner tie rod ends. That needs to be done as well. But the reason why we're doing this is because the truck bounces a lot. You could be riding down the road and it could be just a regular bump and the front of the truck just does this constantly. You could feel the springs oscillate constantly, and it's and it is very annoying, especially when you get on the interstate where you have those little lines that's in the road that your tire goes over and makes that constant sound. The truck just bounces constantly, constantly. So I got these new shocks and blocks and cranking the torsion bar so we can get rid of that, and this truck could run a whole lot smoother. So let's get into it. Now the one problem that I know that I am going to have is the fact that I don't have a full size jack. So I will be using those blocks right there to set under the truck so I can bring those little stupid trolley jacks, these little cheap ones that I never buy a good one, to set it up high enough so I can go ahead and lift the truck, break the lug nuts and loose and everything like that. That's going to be the most fun part. Not working on the ground, but working with the small, tiny jack. And I know I need to get another jack. I plan on getting one from Harbor Freight. I just keep being cheap and procrastinating. So don't be like me. Don't procrastinate. That's the cheap little jack right there. It sucks. It really does. I really got to get a new one, but we'll make do for now. Inner tie run in needs to be done right there. Uh, brakes aren't looking too bad, but I've got a good little lip there. That's what happens when you do a pad slap. It's vibrating a little bit, so I need to get some new rotors uh, pretty soon. But anyway, this is the culprit right here. This is what we shall be replacing. So I finally got the stud, the nut up here loose from the stem, uh, but I can see right here, look at this. This is why I had a blinking ABS light. This is the wheel speed sensor. Now I just replaced this sensor on the other side of my truck a few months ago for the same very issue. Over time, this becomes brittle and very hard, not as flexible, and then it cracks and it causes intermittent wheel speed uh, speeds to register or not register towards the ecu so i'm going to have to replace that i'm not going to replace that at this moment but it's nothing to it really it would be a good time for me to do it now but i i'm just ready to get this suspension fixed well this is proof how blown this is so i just removed the top nut off of it and look look at this i can just push it down like that that is it it is it is so blown it's, it's out of this world. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and finish pull this bolt off down there. And we're going to pull the shock out and replace it with the new one and move on to the next side. So I was going to just leave the, this wheel speed sensor and just let it ride for right now and deal with it. But that blinking ABS light is the most annoying thing. So I'm going to just do a temporary fix with these wires. We're going to temporarily connect them back together. I've got my little kit. I haven't decided, but I think I want to solder them. I just need to go ahead and make sure I got my soldering and butane fluid and all that good stuff. So I'm going to keep doing this off camera. Then we'll move on to the next side and keep rocking and roll. So is it sloppy? Yes, it is. Because I couldn't find any more butane fluid to solder everything. But I just put uh, some, I just was able to connect it. And I think it looks all right. We'll see if it lasts or not. It's only temporary, but... It is sloppy, but you gotta have some slop in it if uh, you're in the sloppy mechanics group. So let's keep on rolling. Go ahead and 
hand was cranking my torsion bars. This is right here, my torsion bar. This is the torsion key. Some people replace them with uh, different ones. It's got different drop or lift points that is up, down, inside of here, right here. And this side had about 10 threads showing, as you can see on the opposite side. You see how many threads are showing on that one right there. But for mine, I went ahead and cranked it pretty good. I don't have that many threads showing, that should be good enough. And it's a whole lot easier when the wheel is still up off the ground and it's not, doesn't have the weight of the truck on it. So uh, I cannot go ahead and do the inner tie rod in. I do not have a wrench that big. So I'll do that another day. That's not a big deal at all. We'll take care of that later off camera, but we'll finish do these shocks. And this side has been taking a while because I did a couple extra things, but now we can just turn on the burners and let's finish this thing up. So as you guys can see, putting that tire on really shouldn't be that hard, but when you deal with rinky dinky jacks like I do, then you're there constantly playing with the, you know, your life hanging in the balance. But we got this side done, finally. I think I said that like 14 times just now. Let's keep on going. All right, guys, so a little out of breath. Got the second tire back on. Second one was really annoying because that black Craftsman jack that I had completely gave out. Like the most it would actually jack is maybe like, like a half an inch to an inch at the most. And all I needed to do was to raise up the rotor, just raise that whole thing up so the top of the shock absorber, can I can thread that down and then go ahead and tighten it down. Couldn't do that. So uh, luckily I still had my everything under my jack stand. So I let one jack down on the jack stand, take that one jack, put it under the rotor, lift up the whole assembly, tighten it up, drop that back down, lift the truck back up, put the tire on. Long overdrawn process. If I just wasn't so cheap before, I'm frugal now, cheap before and just get a good jack. So I gotta get a new jack. This job could have been done in no time, honestly. But now we're moving on to the rear for the rear shocks and rear blocks as well. So let's go. All right guys, so we've got this side off at least. I still have to jack it up, but I got the lift blocks here and got some u-bolts here some brand new ones they probably will have to be cut and shortened down once they get installed but we will do that so now it's time to go back under jack the whole thing up and start installing some so let's go well, i just noticed i have to pull this wheel off to make this whole install go a whole lot smoother at least doing it on the ground so i'm looking at it and the truck has got that california lean look at the front is so much higher i don't know if the camera can do it justice but it's mad higher here than it is there i should have measured the before height and then the after height but it'll be all right we're gonna lift it up take these wheels off take this wheel off take the uh shock absorber loof and then i can go ahead and drop the axle down on this side replace what i need put it back up and go like side that. note i lied don't have to take the tire out so now it's time to go ahead put the parts on there All right, so we got one side installed. Now I still have to go ahead and tighten these bolts up here and then cut these a little bit shorter as well. That'll come, but now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is remove this shock right here, replace this as well, and then I'll tighten everything down on this side and then I'll move on to the other side. So that way the last thing I have to do is actually cut these short. So as you guys can see, it's actually raining now, but I'm in the zone right now. We are not about to stop. We about to keep knocking this thing out. We got one last corner to do, which is the blocks and also the shot. I got it down packed. We're gonna knock it out. It's messing up my camera. 
Let's roll. We are done. Finally, after a couple hours, I can't feel my hands and I can only imagine how dirty my clothes are. Does it look bad? Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's pretty awful. So we're finally done. The truck looks higher, the truck looks level, and I know for a fact it's gonna ride good. I'm gonna try and dust off as good as I can, and I'm gonna hop in the truck, take it down the road, and see how it feels, but I can only imagine how wonderful it is. So let's do a recap of everything that was done today in the rain. So honestly, I wish I was a shade tree mechanic because if I was, I would at least have a tree to shade up under. But you know what? We made it work, okay? I was determined. I had a hot fire playlist that was also going, so it made it a whole lot easier. Front struts that was done, I also replaced one of the uh, wheel speed sensors. Not replaced it, fixed it rather. I'm cheap, you know. Yeah, let's see if it'll work rather. We got that done. The whole front is completed. Now on to the back as well. I put blocks back in it because there was zero blocks in it. I took them out to lower the truck down. But with pulling and stuff like that, I've pulled vehicles to like North Carolina, states out and stuff like that. And it wasn't bad, but it scraped pretty good, especially those front heavy cars. They definitely weighed a bit and I had a bowing effect between the back of the truck and the trailer. So the blocks and we got struts as well. And I just feel really accomplished that we just went and knocked and hammered this thing out. So now the last thing to do, hop inside of it, drive it and see how she feels. That truck is definitely back to the height that I used to know about it before. So I just threw on some different clothes because I definitely couldn't get all that wet sand and stuff off of me. But right now it's time for the preliminary driving. So first impressions of this preliminary drive is one, truck super high like it's back to the height it was and it gets me so hyped man because i truly love the height that it used to be so just cranked it up let's see if abs light is on still an abs light i couldn't all right at least try it see if it was going to work or not doesn't seem to appear to work that's fine but the main thing for me to do right now is to drive this truck and make sure one the wheels won't fall off which i'm pretty sure that's not going to happen but to make sure nothing else flies off and stuff like that so it's time for a little drive around the block and back again and tuck her in once everything is all good to go so far it seems to ride pretty good no abs light actually So right here is usually about where it goes um, 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 up and down, up and down like that. And so far, nothing at all. Like it is riding back to normal. It's actually absorbing the shocks. It's the name shock absorbers. So it feels really good. I'll see you guys when I get back to that. went and got the mail and I think this finally does it. Look how high the truck actually is again. Like look at all that room down there. It is awesome, man. I'm loving it, man. And this truck rides so smooth, so smooth. The truck is now just dirty and it needs to be clean. Look how high I've got to jump into it. So there you have it, guys. We are back at the house. The truck drove amazing. No wheels fell off. ABS lights still went on and off, but that's no big deal. I can get another wheel speed sensor for what? 10, 12 bucks or something like that. Really cheap. I just want to at least try it. Didn't work, whatever. Anyway, it runs, it rides perfectly from no more squeaky squeaky from last week's video to it riding smooth as glass. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, there was a time that I dreaded driving in this truck. There was a time I loved driving in this truck. When I first got the truck, it drove wonderfully for a long time. And then of course, with time and ignorance of taking the blocks out and slamming it down, the ride quality went away. So now restoring it to the proper ride height, it rides just wonderful. Picking up the kids, it's no longer like, you know, all over the place and just jump bouncing up and down. There's no more of that. And this feels absolutely wonderful. But that's it for me, guys. It's time for me to go inside because I'm cold. I can't feel my fingers and I need to shower and get some nice iced coffee because I'm that weirdo that drinks iced coffee no matter if it's freezing outside. But anyway, guys, I will catch you guys in the next one. If you did enjoy this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you didn't enjoy the video, give me a thumbs down. But you at least have to tell me why. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Mm.